uh, an amazing man who, over three decades, influenced this institution. We also have many people in this room, and I'd like them to stand as well. Former employees and current employees that are here tonight because they do invest in our students. So all of you who work at Lewis right now, or who worked at Lewis in the past, could you please stand up? give back to Lewis University. Many institutions have a number that's in the 30s. 87%, nearly nine out of 10 of our employees who actually know how the sausage is made, <laughs> give back to our students because they believe in our mission and they know it from the inside. And that is a really incredible statement about what it is that we do at Lewis. So these circles keep turning in on themselves. Anthony Sam, who gave our prayer tonight, was a student who became a faculty member, who became a coach of our future lawyers, who is an investor in our students. Luigi Amendola, who runs this whole thing, uh, was a student at Lewis University who went and worked at other places and then came back to raise money for our students. And I could go on and on and on about all the ways in which people who were touched by this university decided at a later point in their life to reinvest some of what they have earned back into the future of our students. And that is a, an amazing thing from my point of view. So just a few stories from my week. You know, most of you in this room do not have the privilege that I have, which is to day in and day out interact with our students, our faculty, and our staff. So today, and I'm still stinging from it a little bit, our women's volleyball team lost in the semifinals uh, to an amazing team from Washington. But they are one of the top four volleyball teams out of 260 or 270 teams in the country. And uh, they played with uh, great poise and character, and they, I'm confident, will remember this weekend the rest of their lives. Yesterday, we had the unveiling of Jet Fuel Review, which is a poetry magazine that our students edit. So most of our students don't write the poetry or do the artwork that's in there, but they learn by reading some of the best poetry written by poets from around the world, and then they edit it into a magazine. We had at that event, chemistry professors, physics professors, reading poetry in front of our students. And it was a packed house. This is one of our largest classrooms, and it was standing room only for our students to listen to poetry. So if, if you think that all students do that are 20 years old is play video games, they're wrong. At least Lewis students don't only play video games. They also come to listen to poetry being read. We are a week away from finals, and our students will um, go their ways uh, back home. Uh, the last little story I'll share is uh, that Joan and I, last week on Thanksgiving, had four students from around the world around our Thanksgiving table. A student from Bethlehem, a student from Syria, and two students from France. And it is 
as all of you have had the experience tonight, it is a deep honor to break bread with our students because they are interesting and interested people. People who care about you and who it's easy to care about. And so I want to close my remarks by thanking you for caring. You show through your generous contributions to the lives of our students that you care about their present and you care about their futures. And for that, we are incredibly grateful. 